Starting from an early age, gifted children show evidence of spiritual sensitivity. These children comprehend the universality of spiritual ideas, like growing in their ability to ask questions and solve spiritual riddles, form a methodical outlook on life and death, or become seekers of transcendent in the cosmos, other people and themselves. Now, these spiritually gifted children are commonly referred to as the Indigo children. Bahai Tudumelan, good evening. My name is Tabo Mulukwani. Welcome to this edition of Soweto Today. Tonight, we're joined in studio by Bob Nelson Matangu, who is a spiritual guide and educator. And he joins us tonight to educate us on children with spiritual gifts and help us understand how society can be support of them. Uh, Bob Matangu, welcome to the show. Uh, good evening. So, Bonababa, thank you for having me. Um, you know, um, before we get into, you know, um, Indigo children and uh, what uh, uh, gifts they possess and stuff, I want us to um, look at who can we say is a spiritually gifted person and also how can we be able to distinguish them from just the general public. Okay, thank you so much for the question. So, well, actually, spiritually gifted people, we're talking about people who've got um, supernatural powers, you know, that were bestowed upon them in order for them to, to make an impact in this lifetime. So, spiritually gifted people suffer from different things because um, in this normal world, they find themselves navigating as abnormal people. So, for example, we talk about people who've got extra sensory, um, who receive extra sensory information. Yeah. For example, we talk about people who see visions things that don't necessarily exist in this dimension, but they see things from divine dimensions, or they see things of, of the future, the past, and the present. So this actually is what makes spiritually gifted people to be slightly disturbed, you know, because they hear voices that are not from this dimension. So they get supernatural guidance. So spiritually gifted people are those who can see into the future, who can sense energies. Spiritually gifted people are people who get sick from the idea that they're having extrasensory. They suffer from insomnia. They suffer from different types of illnesses as a result of the energy they receive. And if they don't administer the energy in a way they're supposed to, it becomes a problem. But, you know, gifted people are here to help us. They've got amazing abilities to ensure that, you know, we find our, um, our happiness and their soul's path has a lot to do with assisting people in a spiritually inclined way. Um, let's now talk about indigo children. I mean, obviously, you know, uh, people would try to understand who are we talking about when mm -hmm. we say indigo children. Maybe you can just uh, tell us why they're called indigo children. So we call them indigo children because these are children who were born after the year 2000. If you can remember well, we were told that by the year 2000, the system is going to crash, the world is coming to an end. So that was actually an end of an eon. We were, we were coming into a new age, you know. So in this age, the universe had bombarded so many cosmic rays that had changed human consciousness. That's why since that time, children who were born after the, the year 2000 are quite... Um, um, conscious of so many things we call them woke you know they're almost woke so the consciousness is so advanced this is why now they are um, um, liberated you know they can't be boxed they can't be forced to do things because their consciousness is quite open up so this also comes with very heightened you know sensitivity towards um, intuitive abilities yeah. so it means they're spiritually gifted most of them they can sense they can see things that are beyond the physical realm they can even channel things through their intelligence that's beyond this physical realm so we call them indigo children because they are very special breed of children who are extremely intelligent who are open-minded and who are highly gifted also in terms of their spirituality i mean speaking about gifts i you know i'm, I'm trying to understand now when we talk about the gifts that they possess uh, what is it that we're talking about maybe you can give us examples uh, normally when we speak about you know mm -hmm. the gifts that indigo children might have uh, what are we talking about okay so typical examples we've got those who are able to you know dabble between um, brain states what I mean by that it's that they can switch into a very quiet state which is like a trance and start seeing visions on a normal day 
they sometimes doze out or it just get lost. Yeah. You talk to that person and they're actually absent because they got into a trance. They start seeing images and pictures which are divine images. So this is what we call a seer, someone who can see into visions. Another ability they have is, is for sensing energies. This is clear sentience. When they come into a space where death or cared, they feel that heaviness. When they come into a space that is infused with bad energies, they can feel them. They can pick up energies. I mean, these are the children who would look at you and say, you are not a nice person. And you find that they were actually able to pick it up through their sensory data because their, their senses are highly um, um, sensitive. Mm -hmm. And also we talk about those who've got what we call clear cognizance. It's that, it's that idea of you know, receiving divine information through your normal thinking process. So they, they are able to now um, you know, channel information from, 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 from other dimensions, you know, divine dimensions without even knowing. So these are children who can give you counseling, who can predict future events without even trying hard. They can divine into your life you know, in a normal state. They don't have to go into a trance. So this is normally used by people who start preaching and they tap into other issues which are very profound and they are, you know, they're quite inspired. So they're able to channel through their minds. So these are just typical examples of spiritual abilities that indigo children possess. I mean, before we go for an ad break, I mean, we know that, uh, you know, uh, these gifts are complex, um, yes. you know. Um, so, I, I, you know, I want to get a picture of how extend are these complexities for these young people? How do they deal with them? How do they navigate around such gifts? It's quite a tough one because, you know, first of all, we're talking about children. If you're still under the leadership of parents who don't believe in African spiritual ways, they will dismiss you. You know, they'll say you, you are demon possessed. They'll take you to a pastor every single weekend for the pastor to pray for you because they, they believe you're demon possessed. So when you go into crowds, you start picking up energies, you, you, you get overwhelmed. So it's quite complex because when you are seated, you start, you know, hearing voices because, you know, clear audience is one of the abilities they have. Mm -hmm. They start hearing information, which is not from this dimension. And as a child who's not taught or who's not coached, you start believing that you're insane because you are channeling information which is not there. Because I'd be saying, you know, somebody said this and that, and you'd say, no, but Matlang, nobody said that. And I'd believe I'm crazy as a child because I don't know what this is. And possibly if they, there are no spiritually gifted people who are practicing in my family, it becomes extremely hard. But in the world of normal people, we are considered abnormal. And when you go to the normal world, you must behave in a normal way. If you don't, as an indigo child, you become the black sheep because you know, your behavior would be extensively different from everybody else. Well, Matlangu, I want us to park it there. My guest tonight is uh, Bob Nelson Matlangu, who is a spiritual guide and educator, talking to us about uh, you know, uh, spiritually gifted uh, children who are called indigo children. We're gonna take a quick ad break. When we come back, we continue with the conversation. Do stay with us. Welcome back. You're still watching So It's Today. Thank you for choosing to stay with us. My name is Tabo Malukwani. We're still joined by Bob Nelson Matlangu, who is a spiritual guide and educator. Now we shift focus and look at the challenges of spirituality, you know, spiritually gifted children in schools, uh, their families, as well as in society at large. Bob Matlangu, Matlangu, much appreciated for staying on. I mean, we touched a bit about it before we went mm -hmm. to the ad break, but let's talk about these challenges, how they look like. Um, in general, um, you know, obviously there are teachers involved in schools uh, as well as families. Um, maybe I, I'm trying to just uh, get a picture of what these challenges will look like in a school setting. Mm -hmm. And then in the family, how should parents, uh, you know, look at uh, mm -hmm. so that they can be able to understand that actually my child is gifted? Okay. So basically, um, in the school setup, it, it creates a chaos. But fortunate enough, we don't have too many of them, you know. So say, for instance, this one had exceeded the grace period. We're talking about a time that which they must have trained and completed training. So they go into a series of blackouts. They go into a trance. And once that happens in class, you can imagine what happens. A teacher cannot proceed with, you know, the lessons, but they have to stop and give attention to the child. And what happens after that, the parent is going to receive a call from the teachers that your child had actually blacked out in school. So they have to leave work or actually send someone. So it's also impacting, impacting them financially. It also impacts their work because they constantly have to ask for time out from work. So that's how it's affecting the school setting. And unfortunately, the school does not know how to deal with such cases. You know, there's also stigma and bullying. And so also you ask about 
what, how, how does the situation affect people in the home? So in, in a home setup, a problem is when there is a clash of belief systems because yeah. you know, a vast majority of us are Christians. So when you are spiritually gifted, you know, it's considered something that's not so biblical. So you find that a child has to suppress and the child is struggling. They have nightmarish dreams because you know, these things are things that come in, in an image that one has to understand and comprehend. But as they grow under a situation where it's not endorsed, it becomes a nightmare. Again, when the child actually, you know, blacks out, they take them to the doctor. And one devastating fact is that, you know, they come to a point, it comes to a point where they get extremely ill with illnesses that cannot be diagnosed by medical mm -hmm. professionals. So it's also impacting on the medical bills again with something that they cannot actually solve because it's spiritually related and it can only be sorted out spiritually. Mm. Let's talk about your spiritual journey. Yes. Uh, I mean, maybe just take us through your journey, how you've managed to, you know, um, navigate uh, the, the, the gift in mm -hmm. its entirety. And also, you know, what were the challenges that you came across as uh, you were growing up? Okay, so at least for me, when I was a child, it wasn't a problem because I'm a self-initiate. You know, I'm an apostle, I'm a sent one, I, I have a message for the world. So I was raised under parents who were, who were in church. So I was actually practicing my gift by them because at the age of five, I think I was a Sunday school leader. You know, I assumed leadership roles. But when I started making decisions, I snapped out of church and started making bad decisions, you know, yeah. thinking I'm not going through with this. I was told I had a gift, but I didn't take it seriously. So as a child, I don't think I really had struggles because I was aligned. And, you know, in my, in my maternal family side, they understand these things as obnyan. So because, you know, we were taken through rituals, everything was fine by then. So when I had to make decisions, that's when I messed up because I decided to, to become a Christian. I was born again. I was a pastor. I was ordained. I was preaching in church. I wanted nothing to do with anything to do with ancestors. So, but a time came when, you know, God had to isolate me so that I would realize that's when I struggled as an adult. I was married at that time, you know, I had to lose so many things because I was trying to, to move towards a direction which was not within the alignment that God had put me to, put me through. So it caused so many um, challenges. I lost so many things. I even lost a bit of my um, reputation at that time yeah. because I was losing possessions, losing confidence, losing everything until such a time where I had to admit, and it was tough because as a self-initiate, it's not every type of healer who can decode and assist you in your journey. And these children are called self-initiates, these indigo children, because they're so awoke in a way that they also go through training in their dreams. So I mean, as a self-initiate, and I started, you know, um, engaging with people who understood who I was and who took me through, through the process and guided me. And I found it spirit mode where I'm assisting indigo children and I'm assisting self-initiates as well because they're greatly misunderstood. You know, the society says if you didn't go through the traditional institutionalized in, uh, initiation, yeah. you're not a healer. So I'm taking people like that through the kind of practice or the kind of um, process that's specifically for them. And the indigo children, we do assist them as well because, you know, they find themselves young, not understanding and in the midst of, you know, a chaos while they're yeah. still in school. Um, Let's talk about the soul mode, um, you know. What, spirit mode? Yeah, uh, spirit mode and what it does. Um, also, you know, does it interweave with your sp the spiritual work that you do? Yes, um, spirit mode is an organization that I started because the name was inspired, you know. I, I was in business, I loved doing business. But one day I started asking, you know, God and my guides. I said, no, I, I want to be in business, but something is not working out. What is wrong? So they told me you need to establish spirit mode. And I was so yeah. upset because at that time I didn't want anything to do with church. I was trying to understand my African spirituality. So this organization was founded, you know, in order for me to assist people like myself, people who are self-initiates, people who are struggling with their calling and people who don't understand African traditional rituals that are actually blocking their ways. So I basically major in terms of spiritual education. You know, I've got a channel on TikTok, spirit mode as well. So I'm teaching people about intuition, dreams, how to understand their calling and, you know, how to make sense of their journey. So the major part is for me to spread information without actually trying to bash Christianity or bash any other tradition which is in contradiction to what I believe in as an African traditional practitioner. But the organization is there to, you know, bring everyone together. So I've got a group of self-initiates who are about 90. 
you know we are working together those who need assistance assist them mentorship i mentor them which is another you know greatest component of my work so i mentor those who need mentorship and i also assist with issues like dream interpretation because that's where the actual message begins when you're gifted your key um, channel for communication to understand your purpose in this earth it's going to be um, through dreams then once you have grown then you can start tapping into different faculties of intuition because i mean uh, it must be difficult to interpret uh, dreams because you know you would hear people uh, you know saying this and then it actually means that and that but how important is to make sure that the dream is interpreted correctly Lovely. So I came across this problem myself. So then I created a model which I am um, teaching currently to people who are spiritually gifted, you know. So I also have online mentorship and online programs that I have tailored for such people. Yeah. So it's so complex because you need to understand context. When you look at dreams, we've got generic meanings which are spiritual. We've got Christian based interpretation of dreams. We've got Islamic based and hopefully or uh, possibly there's other, you know, um, disciplines of dream interpretation but i've created a three-phase model which actually looks into um you know as to whether the dream is literal or it's figurative that's when you can be able to put the right connotation to that then the second phase in the flow chart would be um looking at the dreamer's emotions because emotions can change the whole entire dream based on what we know yeah. in terms of what dream symbology means and the third part that's where you analyze every element and getting an exact interpretation in line with whether is it literal or is it is it literal or figurative and also looking at the dreamer's emotion so it's quite difficult i also see a lot of healers on TikTok trying to interpret and i see that we still need to learn not that I'm, I'm undermining them, but looking at individual elements is also important because in the African context, it's not the same as, you know, other contexts in terms of our interpretation. But Masangu, uh, we're going to take a quick ad break. Uh, when we come back, I want us to look at, uh, you know, what advice would you give to families that have spiritually gifted children or just individuals that are spiritually gifted? We're going to take a quick ad break. We're coming back after this. Thank you. Welcome back. You're still watching So It's it Today. Thank you for choosing to stay with us. We are almost at the end of the show and I've been in conversation with Bob Nelson Matlangu, who is a spiritual educator and guide uh, here tonight, helping us to understand the intricacies of spiritually gifted children and the challenges faced by them, you know, that tend to tremendously affect them in some way. Uh, he's still with me in studio this evening. Uh, but Matlangu, I, I want us now to focus on the advice, mm -hmm. uh, you know, to families, and teachers, I mean, you've highlighted a very important aspect earlier on saying that, look, school settings or teachers are not best suited to deal with these issues because mm -hmm. sometimes if there is, uh, a, 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 you know, a situation, obviously they would rush to the office and they wouldn't know what to do. Mm -hmm. How do we advise uh, them? And also in terms of our school curriculum, what is it that we need to do to inculcate uh, you know, um, spiritual education or just religious education, if I may put it that way, uh, into the curriculum so that people can also understand that, I mean, we are Africans. Okay, so now that's a, that's a very hectic um, um, aspect of, of my, my um, a very hectic aspect of my spiritual teaching because it becomes a problem. It's a huge hurdle when you have to talk to people who believe in the religion of Christianity yeah. or mainstream religions. As an African, if you talk about anything that has to do with our African tradition, you know, we sound as though we're primitive and have been captured on the other side of, you know, good and evil. So, but actually what needs to be done is people need to respect and understand, even if you don't believe, but just understand there's children who come from that background. Because unfortunately, as people who are not here for the same purpose, I'm sorry to just tap into this, yeah. for the same purpose, but other people will never experience anything to do with ancestors because in this lifetime, they're not here for that. Some people cannot live without experiencing ancestors or spirit guides or going through a spiritual path. So unfortunately for those who don't, they don't see the need, but going back to your question, what can be done is we can conduct workshops to educate teachers on how to deal with this without having to taint their faith. But, you know, making provision for those who are in this predicament. And also, it, it becomes very difficult for a child who is constantly bashed and, you know, um, cast out because of this thing, because it's beyond their control. Like I said, again, even with parents, if your parents are Christian and you've got a gift, 
they will keep telling you this these are demons they take you to a pastor a pastor will pray for you for over 10 years and you'll be struggling with the same dreams same um, emotions and same problems but now what we, what needs to be done it's a series of workshops so that people can understand you know we should put religion aside because a calling does not belong to a religion or tradition but it's something that comes from god that's that's given to someone who has to have an impact in this lifetime through different you know religions and different people from different walks of life but i think education is one key aspect that we need to entertain so that we can open up our minds and accept what's going on and you know look at how best can we solve such a predicament i mean i'm, I'm you know i'm also um actually i'm not sure if i should say fascinated and and, and stuff but I'm, I'm i'm looking at um you know for instance um a spiritually gifted child mm -hmm. um Obviously, somewhere, somehow would say something, uh, as you said, in a family setting yes. or maybe to an adult. Mm -hmm. And we know how people can be. Yes. They'll say that this is just a child. Mm -hmm. uh, and so how do we navigate such situations and also making sure that people actually understand that also uh, children can be spiritually gifted? Well, unfortunately, people have made their choices, you know, to believe in tradition or religions which dictate how life should be lived yeah. according to the quotes that they abide by. So there's no easy way around this because when a child sees, especially if there's someone who is sinister in the family, yeah. if the child exposes them, they will try and demonize them as much as they can. So the child will be discredited. Whatever the child has to say will be just dis discredited, you know. And also, even if the child says the right things but uses a connotation that has a lot to do with ancestors, they get dismissed. So, but what needs to be done is that adults must look at their children because now when they come for, consult for consultations, you find that a person says, my child is so slow, my child is no longer intelligent. It's because they've come to a stage where their gift has to be noticed and it has mm -hmm. to be nurtured. So with, with adults who choose not to accept and open their minds and understand, you know, there is spiritual gifts which are not connected to tradition or religion. They make it difficult, but a child will always suffer until they're old enough to make their decisions. So when a child is under the roof, they will always suffer. You look at them, they have bad relationships. They have bad social relationships. You know, they have difficulty sleeping. They suffer from insomnia. They suffer from, you know, um, getting overwhelmed by emotions that um, happen when they connect with other people's energies. So it's so difficult for them, but unfortunately when adults choose not to be open-minded and look into this thing with an open heart, it becomes a problem. I mean, just lastly, before I let you go, because we are running out of time, but, um, you know, I'm also interested in, uh, you know, words of encouragement that you can give to those young people that are spiritually gifted and, you know, they are struggling um, to deal with uh, the, the gift. And also, as you said, challenges are there in family setups, in schools and stuff. They're also trying to navigate them, but they don't know what to do. I mean, as a person who is well versed in this and then, you know, you are also spiritually gifted mm -hmm. and then I'm mean, of an older age, if I may put it that yes. way, what is it that you can advise them with? How do they move around and then get to use their gift? Okay. First of all, you know, I would like to say that to, 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 to anyone who's suffering from this um, kind of predicament, specifically the young kids. So number one, they need to know they are a blessing to us because the universe had created such individuals so that they would be able to impact us in better ways. They're here for the betterment of humanity. Some people live for themselves. They are here for all the experiences about themselves, but they are not here for themselves. They are here to, to ensure that you know, humanity sees light and becomes enlightened in so many ways. You know, so what I can say is that even if you feel tortured by your gift because of your parents and your background, but just know it's called a gift because it's something amazing and special. It's there to make you an extraordinary person who lives beyond themselves. So now how do you navigate around? First of all, you must accept that you are spiritually gifted. Second of all, understand that not everyone will understand your perspective and hold dear to your heart the fact that you are a, a, a chosen one. You know, and you've got a gift to this world that will change the world in many ways. So once you understand that, and if, you know, the family setting is a problem or the school setting is a problem, you'll one day exit school and you'll be able to do this. But now, what I can advise, you need to get a mentor. A mentor is someone who is spiritually gifted, who understands your gift. 
So this person will help you make sense of the things that are happening. When you go through insomnia, they've got solutions for that. When you go through restlessness, they got, they've got a solution for that. And when your parents are not understanding, an external party who's like a mentor will be, will be able to play that role in your life. And again, if you, you are feeling left out, yes, you are not meant to, to blend into you know, the society and behave and be like everybody else because you are selected, you are special. You know, you've got this gift which is supposed to function. Try and look into yourself. Meditate and understand what your gift is about. Nature that and grow it. So once you start doing this, you will experience amazing things like out-of-body experiences. You'll be able to read people's minds. You'll be able to divine into, you know, the future, past, present. So it's so amazing. I just want to say that this is an amazing gift. Regardless of how society would like to bash and, you know, paint it black, it is such an amazing thing. That's why we call it a gift. Once you realize it and you get to levels where we are, you know this is a beautiful gift. You know, the things we do to the world are so amazing. We sleep with fulfillment in our hearts because these children, there's a process we take them through so that they can make sense, understand, and to be aligned to their energies and the gift itself. Bob Nelson Matlango, much appreciated for coming. That was very insightful. Thank you. Much appreciated. That was Bob Nelson Matlangu, who is a spiritual educator and mentor, uh, giving us a clear understanding of the complexities of spiritually gifted children and the difficulties they experience within their families, educational space, as well as in the society at large. He also gave uh, these children some words of encouragement as to how they can navigate their gifts and feel accepted in the society. Well, that's how we wrap up uh, today's episode of Soweto today. Remember, we love hearing from you, so please feel free to talk to us about this episode. Simply send us an email at Soweto today at SowetoTV.co.za. Alternatively, you can call us or WhatsApp us at 081-531-8857. From myself, Tabo Mulukwane, and the rest of the team, good night and thank you for watching.